We usually associate sorcerers with spellcasting. However, as every good sorcerer knows, having a weapon is as important as having a staff. And in Dark Souls 3, we have a small selection of weapons that go hand in hand with the sorcerer's arsenal. And in this video, we will take a look at these weapons and determine if one of them is objectively better than the others. But first, we have to categorize our list. Some weapons only work on hybrid builds while others do not. What I mean by that is that some weapons only require the intelligence stat to get stronger while other hybrid weapons work on builds with two major stats like intelligence with dexterity. We will start with intelligence weapons then hybrid weapons. I will also add the most relevant comments I got from my viewers for my best strength video for each weapon we will showcase. So let's begin. Let's start with straight swords. They are very easy to use and very low in weight, something every sorcerer loves. We have three straight swords to consider. Let's start with the Crystal Longsword and Crystal Lothric Sword. Both can be acquired in the beginning of the game. The Longsword requires 10 in both Strength and Dexterity and gets an A scaling in Intelligence. The Lothric Sword requires 11 in Strength and 18 in Dexterity with an S scaling in Intelligence. So you'd probably think that the Lothric Sword is better because of the S scaling. But just like the Exile Greatsword has an A scaling in Strength, while the Herald Curved Greatsword has an S, it doesn't mean that the S scaling is better since we know for a fact that the Exile Greatsword has much higher damage than the Herald Curved Greatsword. The same thing is happening here. The Crystal Lothric Sword has at the very most 5 extra damage more than the Crystal Longsword while having much higher requirements. So the Crystal Longsword is our better pick. The third straight sword is the Cleric Candlestick. And oh boy this thing is a beast. You just see everywhere, it's the true meta. Like really, what were they thinking man? Like what were they thinking? Lighting up a candle? That's just too OP man, that's just too OP. So I won't discuss it and we'll move on. So when it comes to straight swords, the standard long sword that you start with in the beginning of the game is your best option. You can also infuse it with the road gem and buff it with crystal magic weapon, but that will be dependent on a spell which we won't be doing in this video. Another really good intelligence weapon is the Crystal Astora Greatsword. This thing is one of the most adaptable weapons in the game. It's an ultra great sword, yet it weighs like a standard greatsword. It's acquired in Cathedral of the Deep, which is super early in the game. It requires 16 in strength and 18 in dexterity in order to wield and has an S scaling in intelligence. With 60 intelligence and base requirements, you get 221 physical damage and 387 magic damage for a total of 608 AR. That's pretty solid damage, and it's an ultra great sword, so you can benefit from the hyper armor, if you have the armor to back it up anyways. The only thing that stops this weapon from fully shining on a magic build is that it has high requirements, which the sorcerer just cannot afford. Wielding this weapon on a meta magic build means you have to sacrifice some points just to use it, which might hamper your spellcasting abilities, which we said before is essential for a sorcerer. But still, the Astora Greatsword is a great pick nonetheless. The next weapon is Emolition Tender. It's found in Erythil, which is around mid-game. It's a super unique weapon. It requires 18 in both Strength and Dexterity, 12 in both Intelligence and Faith, with an A scaling in Intelligence. With 60 Intelligence and base requirements, you get 285 Physical Damage and 291 Fire Damage for a total of 576 AR. I'm pretty sure that you noticed that it deals fire damage instead of magic damage, so you wonder why it's considered a magic weapon. And the reason for that is for the intelligence scaling obviously, and the other reason is that it actually casts sorceries with its heavy attacks. So even though this weapon has more requirements than Astora's Great Sword, it's still giving you the ability to cast spells, so it has everything in one package. So the high requirements don't feel as bad as Astora's Great Sword. With 60 intelligence, it has a spell buff of 220, while the Court Sorcerer Staff, one of the best staffs in the game, has 238. So it's a really solid casting tool, which means you don't even need a staff while using it. Another cool thing is that you can cast spells while two-handing it, so you can totally retain your melee capabilities while at the same time retaining your casting abilities. That fits the Sorcerer playstyle just perfectly. It has a moveset of a Halberd with very good range of damage, and most importantly, it looks cool as fuck. The next weapon is the legendary Moonlight Greatsword. 
a weapon that represents magic since Dark Souls 1. It's even dropped by the father of sorceries, C. Thiscalus. In Dark Souls 3, it is found after killing Osiris, which can be acquired early game or late game, it depends on what path you take, it requires 16 in strength, 11 in dexterity, and 26 in intelligence, with E scaling in strength and B scaling in intelligence. That is a very high intelligence requirement, but that also gives you the highest magic damage on a weapon in the whole game. With 60 intelligence and basic requirements, you get 135 physical damage and 441 magic damage for a total of 577 AR. The Moonlight Greatsword is almost a perfect pick for a sorcerer, but there are some limitations. The Moonlight Greatsword falls under the Greatsword class category, which means it has hyper armor when two-handed like all other Greatswords. But the thing is, you need a lot of heavy armor to achieve that, so you either use it with the squishy sorcerer and don't get all the benefits of hyper armor, or sacrifice a lot of your spellcasting abilities and use it with armor. When you use it with armor, it's really a standalone weapon, you don't even need to cast spells. It's that good. But this is me presuming you're playing on a meta level build, however, on a high level build, all this doesn't matter. You can have both spells and armor, and this weapon will still kick ass nonetheless. It's fast, it has very good range, is the best greatsword when one-handed, can fire projectiles on its heavy attacks, gains hyper armor when two-handed, and has a super cool weapon art. The next weapon is the Crystal Onikiri and Obidachi. These are dual katanas and the reason it made it here is that it has an S scaling in intelligence. It requires 13 in strength and 25 in dexterity in order to wield. With base requirements and 40 intelligence, you get 168 physical damage and 272 magic damage for a total of 443 AR. Don't let the S scaling in intelligence to deceive you. It has poor damage due to split damage, and it requires the use of both hands for full functionality, which is always bad for a sorcerer, and it has a very punishing dexterity requirement. So all in all, the Onikiri and Obidachi should be used on other builds, since it doesn't perform as well on a magic build. So these are all the magic weapons on this list. Now let's move to hybrid weapons. Let's start with the Great Sword of Judgment. People usually tend to compare this weapon with the Moonlight Greatsword, but it's different enough to consider it as a hybrid weapon. The reason for that is it hard caps when you reach 40 intelligence, unlike the Moonlight Greatsword. So after 40, you gain very little magic damage, but on the flip side, it can gain a lot of physical damage through strength and dexterity, which the Moonlight Greatsword cannot. Despite having an identical scaling of D in both strength and dexterity, Dexterity gives you much more damage, so always prioritize your dexterity over strength when you use this weapon. The Greatsword of Judgment requires 17 strength, 15 dexterity, and 12 intelligence with C scaling in intelligence. It's found after killing Pontiff Sullivan in Erythil of the Boreal Valley. With 40 intelligence and base requirements, you get 263 physical damage and 250 magic damage for a total of 514 AR. If you have 40 dexterity, the damage goes up to 568 AR, with 40 in all 3 stats, you get 610 AR. Its weapon art buffs it with extra 80 magic damage, which is very significant. Its other weapon art is a magic projectile, just like the Moonlight Greatsword, but instead of using weapon durability, it uses focus points. This projectile is much better than the Moonlight Greatsword, it does a bit more damage, but more importantly, it has much better range and accuracy, so you can hit things with it reliably, unlike the Moonlight Greatsword. So the Greatsword of Judgment, although short, can deal a ton of damage, very good for hybrid builds, and outclasses the Moonlight Greatsword on very high level characters, but has some limitations on a meta level build. The next hybrid weapon is the Hazel Pick. Found in the forest just before Farring Keep, it's dropped by Yellowfinger, she's an NPC invader. So you get this very very early in the game. Although it's technically a hybrid weapon due to its strength scaling, I personally consider it a magic weapon. It requires 12 strength, 10 dexterity, and 19 intelligence with A scaling in intelligence. With basic requirements and 60 intelligence, you get 182 physical damage and 254 magic damage for a total of 436 AR. You gain a ton of damage between 40 and 60 intelligence, so if you stick with 40, you'll only have 199 magic damage. If you go 40 strength and 60 intelligence, so you go all the way, you get a total of 478 AR. 
you can further increase your magic damage by using its weapon arc, which also buffs spells too. The most important thing going for this weapon is its ability to cast spells on its heavy attacks. It has a spell buff of 208, so it's a bit lower than the Emolition Tender, but the difference is really very minimal. Moreover, it only deals thrust damage, so it's a perfect weapon for counter hits. I remember showcasing it in one of my underrated builds way back, and the catch was that it can do true combos with spells. For example, at the time, if you get one light attack when two-handed, you can follow up with the Soul Greatsword spell and both hits will connect guaranteed. This is super unique when it comes to true combos in Dark Souls 3, and it gives the mage an edge and a whole new style of leaving a mark in the battlefield. This combo got a new update after the Ring City DLC. Instead of using the Soul Greatsword spell, you can use the Old Moonlight spell. This combo usually takes at least 50% of your opponent's HP, so you can see why the Hazel pick is extremely valid by sorcerers. Its attacks pack a punch, and it stylishly switches between attacking and spell casting seamlessly, a trait sorcerers regard as the highest pinnacle of sorcery. The next hybrid weapon is Frida's Great Scythe, and oh boy this scythe is cool as fuck. I have an in-depth video about it, make sure to watch it if you're interested, you get it after killing, you know, Frida, it requires 12 in strength, 16 in dexterity, 12 in intelligence, and 11 in faith, with A scaling in both dexterity and intelligence, a perfect weapon for dexterity intelligence builds, minus the annoying requirements for faith. With basic requirements and 40 in dex and intelligence, you get 389 physical damage, 257 magic damage, for a total of 646 AR. There is little reason to go above the 40 mark in both dexterity and intelligence, as the damage increase is very minimal. The most astonishing thing about this scythe is, say it with me, of course, the weapon art. You gain hyper armor and it opens a whole new moveset on top of the standard scythe moveset, but even its two-handed light attacks are exclusive in the scythe class. But since this weapon mostly shines while two-handed, casting spells won't be frequent since sorcery spells gains a lot of its damage between 40 and 60 intelligence, and on a meta level build, it's very difficult to have both luxuries at the same time. But on high level builds, this won't matter. So in general, when you go for this weapon, you will be sacrificing some of your casting abilities, but it's worth it. Furthermore, I think this weapon shines more in PvP compared to PvE. But regardless of that, Frida's Great Sight is a treasure for any hybrid build. So ladies and gentlemen, these are all the main weapons for intelligence and hybrid builds. But there are three secondary weapons that are worthy of mention. They are very light and can be easily incorporated with a build, they have unique abilities that can help you in combat, but they don't fare well as standalone weapons. The first one is the Crescent Moon Sword, found during Rosaria's questline. It's an intelligence dexterity weapon and it's very lightweight, weighing 2.5 units. It has the extremely fast curved sword light attacks, but has very low range and damage output due to split damage, but its weapon art is what makes it worthy. It's another moon projectile attack similar to the Moonlight Greatswords and Greatswords of Judgment's projectiles. The big difference though is this is by far the fastest and by far the most reliable to hit. It doesn't deal much damage, but it's so fast that it can be used on reaction and is a very neat addition to a hybrid build. The second weapon is the Aquamarine Dagger, yet another dexterity intelligence weapon, found at the start of the Drake Heap. This little dagger is objectively better than the Crescent Moon Sword by every measure except the projectile weapon art. It's even lighter, weighing 1.5 units. This is extremely lightweight, especially considering how much damage you can dish out with this thing. Its weapon art has the same concept as Frida's Great Sight. It opens up a whole new moveset that at least doubles the range of the dagger, and the speed on it is insane. It also has a running L2 and a rolling L2 attacks, which are also very unique. You could to some extent consider this little dagger as a main weapon, but it goes really well when you use it alongside Frida's Scythe or any other hybrid weapon, and it also lacks the quick step ability like other daggers, which is kinda crucial for their dagger class. The third secondary weapon is Crystal Sage's Rapier. This is the only one of the three that works with pure intelligence builds. It still has a high dexterity requirement of 18 though. It's the longest rapier in the game and one of the best looking ones too. It's too bad that its damage is pure and utter crap, 
One unique benefit of this weapon is that it uppers your item discovery, so it's a good tool for farming things in the game. And that's it, really. These are all the notable magic weapons in Dark Souls 3, so which one triumphs all the others? Which one is king? Let's go step by step. When it comes to pure magic weapons, you can never, ever go wrong with the crystal longsword. Duh, it's a straight sword, but it lacks originality and style and doesn't have any speciality. So the winner in this category is the Moonlight Greatsword. It's troop for both PvP and PvE, it has the most magic damage, top-notch range, and it looks super awesome. When it comes to hybrid weapons, the Great Sword of Judgment is the best at high levels, especially in PvE. The reason for that is it scales off 3 stats, and it outdamages almost every other weapon in this category, including the Moonlight Great Sword at higher levels. The best PvP weapon, and in my opinion, the best magic weapon in the game, is the Hazel Pick. I know it's very simple, but sometimes simplicity is all you need. It is found very early in the game, it has very low requirements in order to use it, acts like a normal weapon but also casts high damage spells, this alone raises your unpredictability drastically as you can combine your hits with spells with style. It has hyper armor when two-handed, so you can trade attacks with others with sufficient poise, its weapon art increases attack damage and spells as well, and lastly, it has the super awesome and unique ability of connecting attacks and spells together. All these factors make the Hazel Pick the ultimate weapon for a fully fledged sorcerer. You have the best of two worlds, you can melee and cast spells all at the same time. So here you have it my friends, this is my personal analysis of magic weapons in Dark Souls 3. Make sure to check out my sorcerer guide which goes hand in hand with this weapon. Also, the next video in the series will be the best faith weapon in Dark Souls 3, so I would really love it if you leave a comment telling us what you think is the best weapon for faith builds. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new, if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Farewell.